Welcome to Afro Space with me, Ade Tunji Omotola, and my co host, Nyasha Grace. Today we have joining us today on Afro Space a gentleman by the name of David Iraka, who is the CEO of Ancestry Capital. David is joining us all the way from the Pearl of Africa, Uganda, the capital, Kampala. Welcome to Afro Space, uh, David. Uh, thank you, Ade Tunji. And Good evening to you and good evening to, to the viewers. Thank you very much. Now, David, I'll just do a quick uh, bio of your company. Ancestry Capital is a niche uh, wealth management brokerage that provides uh, expertise across a range of financial services required by business. Your payoff line is that uh, let Africa be, you are the guide to African investment. You're also involved in corporate advisory, as well as scaling up small businesses, particularly those who have been decimated by COVID. So small businesses, as well as medium sized businesses. But also okay. what you do as Ancestry Capital is to also give um, market access advice to businesses that or investors that want to come into Uganda and of course leverage that big East Africa market of uh, Rwanda, Ethiopia, Kenya, and uh, I suspect South Sudan. So thank you Great. for joining us and uh, yeah, we're happy to have you. <clears throat> yes, thank, thank you for having me. Uh, Tunji, I look forward to, to the interview. All right, David. So obviously we're out of the eye of the storm, uh, so to put it, in terms of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but perhaps could you just give us an idea of how Uganda tackled the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and uh, some of the biggest lessons that you think as a country uh, you learned through this time and as an ongoing uh, learning from the pandemic? Yeah, uh, thank you for that question. Um, yeah, so firstly, I think our approach uh, from a leadership perspective was was on point. Um, our president came out and immediately uh, tightly controlled the and arrested the situation, uh, almost uh, from, from a militant uh, perspective as well. Uh, there was an immediate uh, lockdown, and I think that really uh, assisted in, in uh, saving lives and, and preventing the spread of the illness. Um, just maybe to give you a background on, on, on where we are as an economy. Um, obviously, we've been uh, hard hit and the, the growth has been halved, almost halved um, for the 2019-2020 um, financial year. And also bear in mind that we have uh, about 8 million Ugandans under the poverty line. And of those uh, 8 million Ugandans, 90% um, are youth. Um, and, and one of the errors I believe that the government made, um, if, if any, was to, to focus on 1.5 million people in the urban areas of Uganda. So capital city Kampala had um, a lot of uh, attention. Uh, the formal sector had a lot of attention. Um, but we neglected the youth, uh, we've neglected people in the urban um, areas uh, who are uh, the poorest of the poor. And I think um, that is uh, something that the government is now working to, to, um, to resolve. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of uh, disruption, yes, there's been a lot of disruption 
uh, particularly with, with service delivery. Um, and as such, um, there's been an increase um, in the number of preventable diseases uh, that we're recording. So things like malaria, uh, which is common in this part of the, uh, of the continent, um, has been affected in that way. Um, so, so those are some of the, um, the, the highlights in terms of um, what we've noticed in Uganda. But I also wanted to just perhaps um, uh, talk about some of the strategies for, um, for, for, for improving things going forward. So one of the areas in terms of recommendations that we've been uh, focusing on is um, the urban and formal sector learning measures need to be applied in a way that is clear and inclusive with a short, medium and long-term plan for recovery and resilience building. Um, so we need a clear strategy there. Um, we need adequate attention and protection for the poorest and most vulnerable uh, sections of the population. Um, the drawbacks of restrictive COVID-19 response uh, measures should be documented across sectors and used as lessons for designing responses in the future. Um, and lastly, we need to pay close attention to the fiscal deficit that we're currently experiencing um, as, we, as our debt spirals out of control um, uh, due, to the, due to the pandemic. Um, so yeah, that's, those are some of the takeaways, Nyasha. I hope that that answers your question. Okay. Now, David, um, you are the man who is uh, given investment advice around Africa. You are the investment guide for Africa. Now, given the impact of COVID, um, we have seen uh, figures being banded around that as much as about 5% or 3 to 5% of GDP will be lost in Africa. Now, from your vantage point, and I know you're sitting in a, a country that is key in that region, but of course, you're not as big as Kenya, and neither are you as big as um, Ethiopia, but you're sizable in terms of population, and you're sitting in that uh, very key area of East Africa. Given all of this um, impact of COVID, fiscal deficit that you talk about, how has this impacted on investments on your country and the wider continent in your view? Are investors running to Africa now or they're waiting? Yes, so um, good question. I think what, what has been biggest hit um, here in Uganda is, is the key sectors such as, such as tourism. Um, you know, we depend um, very, very um, highly on, on the tourism sector and getting those that foreign currency coming in um, into our country. So that has been affected. Um, however, we don't see it as a as a long term um, sort of um, effect. We we have opened the borders and we're seeing tourists um, coming back into the country. Um, you have to remember that there are certain projects that had already been uh, initiated before uh, COVID came on board. Um, large infrastructure projects such as um, the construction of dams, um, our roads are still uh, being worked on. Uh, as a matter of fact, during the whole COVID time, uh, the, the construction and manufacturing sectors were allowed to, to continue, um, continue operating. So the Chinese are still building roads. We see them um, up and down our, 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 um, our cities. Um, so, so yeah, I think certain sectors have been hit um, worse than others, uh, but we do believe that there will be um, uh, a return to the norm uh, in the next uh, couple of years or so. All right, um, so just to bring the question back home um, for you, David, um, talk to us a, a little bit about um, more of the work that you're doing there at Ancestry Capital. Um, obviously from Adetunji's uh, introduction, sounds like you're busy with business rescue at this yeah. time, um, just to handling the impact of uh, COVID-19. And uh, you also mentioned that uh, you're now focusing on scaling small businesses. Um, give us a more rounded picture of uh, all the work that you're doing at Ancestry Capital. Yeah, so, so maybe just to go back a bit, uh, Nyasha, I started Ancestry Capital in, in Johannesburg, South Africa, um, where I had worked as a banker for 15 years. 
Um, it is registered with the Financial Services Board. But there's been um, a huge growth services sector uh, here, here in Uganda. So there's a, a lack of services. Uh, and, and I saw the need to establish ancestry capital here in Uganda um, to, to sort of manage um, not just Uganda, but the East African region. Uh, we have recently been uh, awarded a contract with the Capital Markets Authority of Uganda uh, to assist companies that need to raise alternative capital or patient capital, uh, primarily through the Uganda Securities Exchange. So, so that, is, that is a huge uphill battle. We only have 17 companies on our securities exchange, um, and, and that needs to change. That needs to grow. So, so that's part of my work. Um, also upscaling SMEs um, in terms of uh, being compliant, uh, in terms of corporate governance issues that they may face. Um, and obviously, once we get into these companies, we, we try and see how we can assist them uh, to, to avoid the pitfalls of, that, that COVID-19 uh, has, has brought from a financial perspective. So it, it's a whole um, uh, corporate advisory solution as well as a uh, wealth management solutions to provide. And then lastly, um, market entry strategy for um, offshore investors that would be looking for opportunities, not just in Uganda, but in this, uh, in this region as well. Mm. Sorry, just a just follow on question quickly. So where sure. are you directing uh, investors currently? Um, you say you assist investors to onboard and to, into East Africa. Where's the business? Where is the money? Yeah, well, well look, um, I think our, our economy is, is largely um, agri, uh, agriculture based. Um, and, um, you know, across all sectors, there is, there is um, a need. So what happens is uh, I get clients coming to me, corporate clients who are looking for, for growth. I then have a list of um, investors, private equity um, investors, uh, whether on the continent or, or elsewhere, um, who are actually trying to, to find business. So it's not really a particular sector. Um, I think it's across the board, but tourism, manufacturing, um, agribusiness, um, these, these are some of the the main drivers as well as, as retail. I mean, we have a population of 40 million. Um, and like I said, the, the, we're probably the youngest country in, um, in, in the world uh, at the moment. Uh, um, so, you know, there's going to be a, a lot of consumption housing. Um, so, so, yeah, I would say, you know, it, it really depends on the appetite of the investor. But it's it's pretty much a very a very virgin virgin territory here. Okay. Now, David, um, I would like you to share with our viewers. I mean, you just alluded to the population. Forty million is a lot of people, especially if you consider that there are only about three or four countries in Africa that are over about eighty million. Nigeria, Congo, Ethiopia, and Egypt are over eighty million. So, forty million is a sizable population. I mean, Botswana is only 2 million people. But can you give us a sense? I want you, I wanted to ask you to give us a sense of the drivers of the economy, but I wanted you to talk more to the telecoms industry because I know that telecoms tends to drive growth. Can you give us a sense of what's happening in that sector in Uganda or what has been happening in the last decade or so? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, that, uh, you're quite right. The retail um, sector, construction, and telcos are, are the main drivers of, of, this, of this economy right now. Um, and uh, what's been happening in the telco space is, uh, as you know, been, been dominated by, by the, big, the big boys, MTN and, um, and, and Airtel. Um, but we've recently seen uh, a new sub, um, a new service provider come on board. Uh, so there's a company called Leica Mobile, uh, which has recently entered the market. Um, the telcos are also now being pressurized to, to list on the Uganda Securities Exchange. Uh, in fact, I think that was one of the conditions that um, the um, uh, uh, UCC, uh, our, our regulatory um, people in, in the telecoms, 
uh, put down as a, uh, a requirement uh, to renew their licenses, but that by 2022, um, these, these telcos should have uh, started engaging and looking at how they can at least float, uh, float uh, about 20% of their shares on, on our securities exchange. Okay, just to just to give you a follow-up question, but short one. Can you give us a sense of the penetration? Is it 100% already or there's room? There's still room for, for the new guys to come in? Yeah, I, I believe I believe there's still room for um, you know the market is big enough to 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 share right now, um, and um, you know I, I know there've been some some companies knocking on the door and like, like I said we've just we've just had we've just had a new um, a new company come on board. Um, I, I think it's really about uh, your approach and your entry uh, strategy because like a mobile for example. Um, has come in with, with a totally different strategy, and 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 they, they look they're looking at, at sweeping the market. Uh, I'm not I'm not able to disclose that uh, that information online here because it's um, it's quite confidential. But but their their strategy is um, is looking at a nationwide um, uh, sort of uh, you know uh, dominance um, that the the MTNs and and the rest of the the big people are not are not looking at. So so in the urban areas now remember um, very recently this year Uganda has been ha, has offered nine um, sort of regions or, or towns the status of cities. So there's a lot of investment in secondary cities about nine of them in terms of infrastructure in terms of roads in terms of power um, and so if your strategy is right and you're looking at the secondary towns and secondary cities, um, then you're, you're able to get a significant market share where, where the competitors weren't uh, historically focusing. Okay. Mm. Mm. All right. Um, let's talk about the big buzzword um, at the moment, and that's the African pre-continental uh, trade area. Um, t give us a sense of how you at Ancestry Capital are viewing this and how you'd like to position yourselves. We know that the potential that the agreement comes with is um, uh, capable of creating an economic block with the size of about uh, $3.4 trillion. Um, what's your take and um, how are you positioning yourselves as Ancestry Capital? So, so, so yeah, I think I think it's great because um, what we've been Uganda is a small landlocked country, and so we we don't have and our market is not big enough for to to absorb the the, the population burst and growth that's currently occurring, and so we've 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 been already engaging other um, sort of unions, the East African um, uh, EAC. And I think also uh, we've been we've been looking at Comesa, but 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 the new the new strategy now is to engage sub-Saharan Africa as well. We can't just start stop looking at at the at the East African bloc. Um, we need to look at a at a, a maybe for lack of a better word a pan-African bloc, and and I think this um, this particular uh, piece of uh, initiative is, is going to bode well. Uh, not just for our country, but um, Africa, Africa as a whole. So uh, our strategy, really, when when we when we look at the dynamics of Uganda as a landlocked country, uh, and also as a country that that is surrounded by South Sudan, by Democratic Republic of Congo, by Rwanda, by Kenya, by Tanzania, um, we are a hub um, that can really um, take advantage of this of this um, unique. Um, Unique location we're in, so Ancestry Capital is looking at you know uh, in terms of um, free trade agreements, you know setting up you know free trade zones. Um, that's something we've been looking at. We've been looking at also expanding our business, not just to to Uganda but um, to the neighboring countries as well. So, so I think from from that perspective, we're we're quite quite bullish about the future. Okay. Now, I know that um, you guys have got some very powerful neighbors in that region. 
Well, can you give us a sense of uh, Uganda's uh, unique economic advantage, competitive advantage over, say, a powerful neighbor like Kenya? Can you just give our a, a viewers a sense of that? What is your, you guys claim to fame economically? Uh, well, uh, economically, we have the silverback gorillas. I don't know if you've heard of those, Tunji. They are found nowhere else in, in the world. So definitely for, from a tourism perspective, um, you know, we rank very highly. Um, but also, once again, the, the, our location, our, our unique location in East Africa. Um, you know, if you'll see countries like Kenya, would really want to come in and, and partner and do business with, with South Sudan. They would really like to enter the, the DRC market, um, but they can't do that without coming through Uganda. So as such, there's been, there's been a tremendous um, investment from our regional neighbors uh, in terms of infra infrastructure and logistics. Um, so, so yes, um, you know, those would be our, our, our key, our key strengths, our, our, our location, um, you know, our, our, the beauty of our country for, from a tourism perspective, um, uh, the untapped resources. So, so we have, we have, uh, numerous untapped resources, um, that require, uh, development that require mining. And, and um, you know, this is once again, something that ancestry capital is, is passionate about, you know, is exposing and then locking, unlocking these these opportunities um, for for investors who are looking to to diversify uh, their portfolios. All right, and um, let's talk about ease of doing business for a second. Um, uh, give us an understanding: How is Uganda performing with regards ease of doing business, and uh, any areas that you can highlight for us uh, that need improvement? Yeah, so um, certainly from, from an ease of doing business perspective, we have not, we have not ranked very highly. Um, but, but I'm happy to say that of recent, we have set up a, a one-stop shop um, center mm -hmm. through the Uganda Investment um, Authority. So we've, we've managed to, to clean up um, that process to make things easier for investors. I must say that um, you know, the levels the levels of corruption have not have not assisted us in terms of attracting attracting um, you know uh, key investors um, and 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 this is something we, we're fighting. This is something we're, we're working closely with uh, with our partners to make sure that we have um, whether it's whistleblowing um, you know policies in our regulatory framework. Um, to encourage investors, um, you know, to come on board. So, so not quite there, uh, but but once again, you know, you would need a partner like Ancestry Capital, you know, uh, to handhold you through that process if if this is a region you wanted to to penetrate. Okay. Now um, I've come to the final question, and I think I'll frame this differently. A few years ago, um, I tried to go into Uganda to take South African wines into Uganda. In fact, I think I was meant to do a tasting at the Soul Club in Kampala. But one of the things that frightened me was the currency. I think at the time it was about 2,600 UG shilling to about a dollar. And I think it's dropped even further. I don't know if it's about 4,000 UG shilling now to the US dollar. And um, yeah, so I, I'm always worried about taking a product from a rich country to a country that is less rich in terms of exchange rate. But the question I wanted to ask you is a simple one. And I think you probably, you'll be able to do justice to it. Is Uganda, and I, I'm talking about that from a perspective of somebody who has tried to get wines in, high tariffs and all that. It is Uganda open for business? A absolutely, uh, Tunji. Absolutely ready for business. Um, you know, and uh, you know, one of the things. I mean, just this week, um, our airport has been flooded with um, you know uh, people coming in from neighboring countries um, who wanted to to continue pushing their their business initiatives. 
I have meetings um, with some real estate developers this week um, who have just flown in because they're, they're keen to, to, to grab the opportunity while, while it's still there. So, so yes, Uganda is open for business. Uh, we always encourage um, investors um, you know, to knock on our door, um, to get the proper guidance, ask the right questions, deal with the right people. Uh, and the return on investment that you'll have in Uganda, if, you, if, you, if you're well, well guided, um, is, is much higher than in countries, for example, um, like where you are at the moment in terms of um, you know, growth and GDP growth and that kind of things. So, so I think we need to be, to be more open to, to the, uh, whether it's, uh, you call it uh, educated risk or, um, you know, just uh, being more, more open to, to uh, opportunities uh, in the rest of the continent besides the, the established um, economies that we know about. That's all the time that we had uh, this afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for coming on to Afrospace and uh, just opening up a window for us into, into Uganda and uh, helping us understand how the economy is performing and obviously the excitement of um, the openness for business um, in Uganda. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>